Have you ever tried making a traffic sign in Blender, but the material just doesn't look right? Or maybe you use Blender to model cars, but the license plates just look wrong. Maybe you even design reflective stickers for emergency vehicles, or reflective clothing, but those things somehow look way more reflective in real life. In this video, I'll show you a quick way to make this type of material, then I'll explain how it works, and in the end, I'll show you a more advanced version. So here's the short version of the tutorial. Of course, delete the default cube, add your desired reflective object, like a monkey. I'm gonna add a subdivision surface and shade it smooth. Then you go into your material properties. Of course, add a new material, make it whatever you want. I'm gonna make it metallic and slightly rough. And let's make it more rough actually. Yeah, like that. And then all you need to do is take the geometry node and take the incoming output and plug it into your normal input. And it looks really weird, but it's actually correct. It looks actually like those anti-paparazzi clothes that many celebrities wear. Like in daylight, it looks really dull. And as soon as we point a light at it, if we enable it here, thin lights and increase its power. We can see it becomes way brighter in the direction of the light. If you don't want this effect to be this strong, you can add a mix RGB node and mix it with a normal input. So now this slider becomes a slider between normal material and this kind of retro reflective material. So why does this work? Well, this kind of material is called a retroreflective material, meaning instead of reflecting light along the face normal, it reflects the light back in the direction it came from. To do this in Blender, we use the incoming vector. If we look at the Blender manual, we can see that the incoming vector is a vector pointing towards the camera. So by connecting this vector into the normal input of the shader, we tell Blender, hey, instead of using actual geometry normals to shade each point, I want you to point all the normals towards the camera, and then calculate the material, which results in this kind of retroreflective material. There is, however, one major drawback to this material, and that is that it only works if the light is in line with the camera. For example, if we put a spotlight to the side and the plane behind it, we would expect to see a reflection in the plane, but we don't since all the normals are pointed towards us and not toward the light. So now for the more advanced version. Here I prepared an example with a stop sign and a basic principled BSDF material with a stop sign texture. And of course, I'm gonna plug in the incoming vector into the normal input of the shader. So the first thing I noticed when looking at references of retroreflective signs are these bands. And the way that we are gonna replicate these bands is by adding a texture. Basically, we're gonna offset the incoming vector a little bit. You could add an image texture, but I'm going to make it procedurally with a wave texture and a color ramp. I'm going to make it blue so that the variation is on the z-axis, but it doesn't really matter. You can try it out on the x and on the y axis. I'm going to subtract 0.5 from it so that it's centered. And I'm going to add a vector scale node which is basically the intensity slider. And then I'm gonna add that vector to the incoming vector. And here you can see the intensity slider in action. I'm gonna put it at some small value, but you can experiment and try putting it in bigger values. Now, the other thing that I think makes this material more realistic are these patterns that you can find in many references. There's many different patterns like hexagon squares and triangles, but I'm gonna go for these distorted squares. The way that I'm gonna do that is by using Voronoi texture with zero randomness, and then I'm gonna add a wave texture to the UV coordinates so that it distorts. There's a bunch of map nodes just in order to scale them properly, but you can find the complete node network at the end of the video. Now that I've got this texture prepared, I'm going to use it as a factor between a normal material and a retroreflective material, because I don't think these lines should be retroreflective. 
Also, I'm going to use this texture as a bump map for the clear coat. So I'm going to add a clear coat and then bump it on those lines because I'm pretty sure that is how this material looks in real life. Now, here is the final result. And here are the final node trees. Now, this material works both in Blender and Eevee, and feel free to tweak the values to suit your desired look. Since English is not my first language, I hope everything was clear enough, but if you have any further questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Thank you for watching.